And I wonder, turn to mountains that I can't climb. You are with me, never leave me. Oh, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing to steal my joy. And I've got a note, church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation that is beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing because I've been restored. situations. And that's not easy. Sure I'm right. telling you, I know it's not easy. I'm casting my cares aside. Here's my past behind. I'm setting my heart and my don't you.
right on mine, but I still haven't got it fixed yet. Uh, maybe Daddy says it's not a good idea for me to be on it right now. Don't do that way. I'm going to get back in a minute. Oh, okay. Well, please help him out. Yeah, one mishap is enough. Okay. Uh, okay. That's 57 okay. years old, man. Oh, You've been walking the same old road from my oh, and yes. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. Come on, guys. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, saving, he's a prison shaking savior. Get out chain. He's a chain breaker. There's a better life, there's a better life, I'm telling you. Translation says it. 
In the very beginning, the living expression was already there. Amen. And the living expression was with God, yet fully God. Amen. They were together face to face in the very beginning. And through his creative inspiration, this living expression made all things. Come on now, tell For us. nothing has existence apart from him. Life came into being because of him. For his life is light for all humanity. Amen. <laughs> and this living expression is the light that burst through gloom. Tell me you can struggle with gloom. What's gloom? Pick up that Bible right now. What's gloom? I don't know what that is. Okay, well you have. Tell me when you have felt darkness. Most days. Tell me when you have been depressed. Tell me when you have felt lost. Tell me when you have felt abandoned. Tell me when you have felt alone. Tell me when you have felt like you could not go on another day. Yeah. We're not alone. Come on. Yeah, well, you train. And in the beginning. Everything came from God. Scripture says that everything was made by Him and through Him and for Him. That's right. Yes. That's right. I was made. Father, we uh, want to hear from you today. We praise you that you are chain breakers, that you are pain takers, that when we are lost, you show us the way. When we are by our full stubborn headedness, walk this way, would you tell us to go straight? You wait for us. You are the loving father that looked daily for the prodigal to come home. Amen. Amen. No words, no words for me today, Lord. Would you please just speak to us? pierce our hearts, transform our minds, change our lives, make us into the image of what Jesus looks amen. like. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You got some peach cheese, so you're going to say? You know, when I was talking to Michael and Megan in their wedding, and I was talking about what love is and how that when we understand that we are the express, let me rephrase that, when we understand that we are called to be the express image of the Creator, it's really, really, really simple. Don't tell me it's not. We are the ones that jack it up. Because Jesus said, because the Word said, in the beginning was the Word. Yeah. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I can't say that enough today so that we get it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There is nothing else. Yeah. There is nothing else in this world. Amen. You know, my favorite story, y'all know this, okay? When Peter looked at Jesus and said, ah, where would we go? When Jesus said, I am the bread of life, I am the living water. If you eat from me and drink from me, you'll never be hungry and thirsty again. And we said, oh good, Lord, thanks, but I'm hungry. My stomach's growling. <laughs> and he said, I brought soup and cookies. And he said, okay, well, let me just say it again. I am the living bread, and if you eat from me, you'll never be hungry again. So if you're hungry, you have not eaten from the living bread. Yeah. If you are thirsty, you have not drank of the living water. Period. There's no other reason. There's no other cause. There's no other solution than the living bread and the living water. Period. Because in the very beginning, the living expression was already there. And the living expression was with God, yet fully God. They were together face to face in the very beginning. And through his creative inspiration, hello. Can you imagine what it took to make a platypus or an avocado? <laughs> or an ostrich, maybe. Maybe an ostrich. Okay, that's some creativity. Or... Have you looked at the stars at night? 
Or have you seen pictures from the Hubble telescope of yeah. space way out there? Or just looked at the moon. It is mind-blowing if you really concentrate on it, if you really look at it and go, oh, that's pretty, I like those colors. <laughs> Miss Louise gave me a book a long time ago that was um, Letters to God, for ch Letters from Children to God. And this one little boy's letter said, Dear God, I didn't think orange and purple went together until I saw the sunset yesterday. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And hey, we saw that coming back. Yeah. His creation was perfect. Everything was great in Genesis 1 and 2. And then in Genesis 3, all hell broke loose and everything fell apart. Not just for humanity, but for humanity and the animals and the earth and everything God had created. God didn't make stars to fall. He didn't make planets to collide. Does God make things that aren't perfect? No. Perfect in his image, he made things and everything was good. Then he made humanity and it was very good. Yeah, baby, that was very good. I'm sure that's what he said. Yeah, baby, that was the message version. <laughs> so Jesus said, I'm the living bread, I'm the living, I'm the the living water, you're gonna eat for me, and everybody left. They walked away. They walked away hungry. I walked away hungry. I walked away hungry in 1983. I didn't know what I was hungry for, but I knew that I was empty. Hungry or starving? Oh, starving, girl. Starving to death, would you? I was starving. That's right. And I had nobody to blame but myself. Okay, I tell you that they threw me a wedding shower, they threw me a wedding, and then they threw me out because I got pregnant before marriage, but I got nobody to blame because I had one of these the whole entire time. Yeah, yeah. And I listened to that guy standing in the pulpit saying what he said and took it for granted that it matched this. What, showing your own food? And I never took it and opened it and read it myself. I read the Bible. I mean, I memorized the Romans Road, and I, I could tell you every story that you have for children's book, and I taught Bible class, and then I did all this stuff, but I did not chew my own food. It tastes I'm telling different. you, one of these days I'm going to show up, and I'm going to have a bowl of chewed food, and I'm going to hand it to you, and I'm going to ask you if you want this for your lunch today. Sure. Why would you want food that I chewed up and spit out? Because then I don't have to do no work. Why would you want already chewed with my spit food and put it back in a bowl, stuck a spoon in it, and handed it to you? Right. It's a big path, Mary. Don't believe anything I tell you. Right. Go to the Word and read it yourself. That's right. So it becomes yours. Because until it's yours, it will not impact your life. Store it up in your heart and then guard it. So, they left. And then the 120 left. And then Jesus looked at the disciples and said, what about y'all? Peter. Where would we go, Lord? Where would we go? Take a United Community Bible. Where would we go? What would we do? Well, who would we live for? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lord bless him. Lord let him encounter you today. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. That's the spirit, y'all. That's the spirit. I feel Jesus. And the present. living expression created mankind in his image. Amen. And then the living expression created in his image ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Amen. And they knew more than they were supposed to know. God said, I love you. And he told them going to surely die. And they changed from being love to needing love. And they morphed into what God did not create. They no longer looked like Him. God said, that's okay. I still got your back. Amen. Amen. 
But because I love you, you're going to have to leave the garden because if you should eat of the tree of life in this condition, you will live forever like this. Darren and I have been talking about this. He said, can you imagine me being 1,700 years old and whacked out on methamphetamines? <laughs> Bad enough at 25. <laughs> so God, Imagine Adolf Hitler. He didn't what, if, what if Adolf Hitler never died? <laughs> what if humanity ate from the tree of life and stayed that way? It would be bad. He's going to let that happen, though. No, he wasn't going to let that happen. That's why he comes back to right. Because in the very beginning, the living expression was already there. Yes. And we were to look like this. Ready? We were to be love, which is large and incredibly patient. We were to be gentle and consistently kind. Do you know what that means? Kind to everybody, whether they spit on you or not. It's not easy, but it's possible. It's easy when he's inside of us. If you're struggling with it not being easy, and I love you, and you can receive this this way, then you need to die to self. I gotta die to self every day. Raise your hand if you gotta die to self every day. Come on, yes, don't taste this. Love refuses to be jealous, and when blessings come to somebody else, they're excited about it. Yeah. Come on. What if the church looked like what the church is supposed to look like? What if Christians look like Jesus? I'd be running over hugging that guy, except I can't run that far. <laughs> I carry you, Mary. Love does not brag about one's achievements, nor inflate its own importance. Paul said, me? Oh, no. I'm the worst of sinners. Hello, Paul. He said, me? I'm the worst of sinners. We keep humility ever present in the front of us because the King of Kings keeps humility ever present in the front of him. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not, ready, easily irritated. On that Come on. I didn't hear anybody say amen after that. Amen. 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 That's the hard one right there. That's the hard one. Already, love is not quick to take offense. Wow. Yeah, I got to work on that. With me? I'm with you. I just realized I need more love. What you think? That's a we know it like this, okay? Love is patient, love is kind, yep. doesn't envy, doesn't boast, doesn't keep record of wrongs. We know that, right? Yeah. That's the same thing I just read. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. What if we did that one sentence, or even the last half of that sentence? Ready, we read again. Finds no delight in what is wrong. What if when we see things wrong, we love till it's right? Yeah. Come on, that was yeah. Jesus, man. Yeah. If when we see things wrong, we love till it's right. That's so yeah. bad. Because in the beginning, love existed. Love is a safe place of shelter. For it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. You can't fail if you never give up. A failure is just one more step to yes, to success. I told somebody the other day who was getting no about something. Oh, I remember what it was now. No about a job. No about a job. Everywhere they applied, no about a job. I said, come on, dude. That no is one step closer to yes. Yes. We rejoice in the no's because the yes is closer. Right, right. You with me? You with yep. me? I don't know. You Let me say it again. Hey, you weren't an anonymous answer, didn't you? Does it like me to lie to you? Be like, yeah, I'm with you. Right now, it feels like even worse coming against me. So. Well, when it comes against us, what does love do? Love rejoices no. in everything. 
It sings his praises. Yeah, I'm still here. You are here. Okay. And I appreciate it. It was hard. It is hard. It's really hard. To do the right thing is only right. It's not easy. You know what I mean? Doing the right thing. Oh, yeah. Isn't easy. yeah I really know what you mean. Right. <laughs> Love never stops loving. If we could do that, too. Love never stops loving. What is love? Love's all that stuff I just said. Love is a person. Yep. 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 In Megan and Michael's wedding, I said, because when Megan and Michael met, um, they didn't know Jesus at all. Like six or seven years ago. They met. She was going to the gym to work out. He was going to the gym to get a job. And they started to become friends. And I'm sure she wouldn't mind me telling this story because I don't know why, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> and so um, they spent all their time living like the world lives as a couple. They spent all their time doing drugs together. They spent all their time doing things that only husbands and wives should do. Yeah. And then Megan met Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Now, Everything she changed. She looked him in the eyes, and her life changed forever. Yeah. And because her life changed, Michael's life changed. And I said to them, the reason you couldn't really love beforehand is because you had never met love because love is a person. Yeah. Period. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That was in 1 Corinthians 13, by the way, and I was in John 1, so y'all can read it yourself when you get home to your tent or wherever you're going. But I want to read this about heaven, okay? So, I read this Wednesday at Bible study. This is from John the Revelator, who had been on the island of Patmos. We complain when we go to jail because we're guilty. Not it's always, not always. Most of the time. Most of the time. Amen, I agree with that. Okay. We got a lot of record of people that were in jail and didn't deserve to be in jail. For Pete's sake, Jesus died on the cross as me, with all my sin, as my sin, took it on himself, and paid the price for it, because when he conquered sin and death, okay, I'm going to come back to Revelation in a minute. So Genesis 3, when all hell broke loose, and we changed from being love to in need of love, and we carried shame and guilt and condemnation, and we no longer looked like the Father at all. We almost really looked like the opposite of Him. That day our identity died. Remember Jesus, the Father said, if you eat this tree, you will surely die. Now, He wasn't just talking to Shirley. He was talking to Adam and Eve. Right, right, right. That's pretty funny. I've never said that before, but that's pretty funny. Um, that was good. It was good. And they didn't From fall over. Again. They didn't even die spiritually, which was what was taught for a long time. Well, they died spiritually. <laughs> Where do you get that from? Somebody said, I bet if we looked at it closely and we understood original Hebrew, we would see that the Lord said, you will no longer look like me. So we couldn't look like him because even for those born after him were born into the inherent Adam sin, the Adamic sin, born into sin, born into sin, born into sin. Tell me about generational curses. 1964, my mom got pregnant outside of wedlock, put me up for adoption. In 1984, in 1986, I had two children out of wedlock. And then in 2004, and in 2005, and in 2007, my daughter had three children out of wedlock. Because generational curses grow. While my mom had one that I know of, I don't know anything about my mother, I had two. My daughter had three. But we have the ability to break the generational curses because of the blood of Jesus and the price that he paid for us. Because here's what happens. Homeboy hung on the cross as you, as you, as you, of all of us. We never even met him yet. We hadn't even been born 2,000 years later. But he took all of humanity and hung on the cross as us and took all of our sin. And he went to Abraham's bosom. 
this is who was arguing with me the other day when we had this conversation between Sheol and Paradise. That was it. That was yeah, it. that was that it. Was, yeah. And so, for three days and three nights, please don't believe everything you hear. Jesus did not die on a Friday and rose on Saturday night. Please don't believe that. Jesus said specifically, I will be in the belly of the ground like Noah was in the, I mean, uh, Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. You cannot get three days and three nights from Friday to Saturday night. It's okay. I don't, care what, I don't care what kind of backwoods math you use, you can't. So do your homework and read the scripture, and I believe it's in the Gospel of John. He said that they had to take Jesus down from the cross for it was the high Sabbath of the Passover that week. They had two Sabbaths that week. Two holy days. The high holy day and the regular holy day. Now we can get three days and three nights. And hello, Jesus was born this time of the year. Right now, right now. We are in Sukkot. We are in the festival of booths. That's when Jesus came because the angel said that he came to dwell with us like a house. If you look at the original words, he came to tabernacle with us. He was not born at Christ Mass. He was born in the fall, in the late summer, this time, right now, right now. This is the festival. Happy birthday, Jesus. So for three days, oh yes. You gotta talk loud, girl, I'm deaf. I'm getting there. That's the bonus. Why do I what? Why Oh, I'll, I'll get you. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get that question. That's good. That's a good question. She said, if Jesus died for all our sin, why is there still sin in the world? Okay, you ready? I'm going to give you this really cool Bible. Okay? I'm going to give it to you. It's now yours. Okay. Give me, give me. But you didn't take it. Give me. Okay? It's a gift given to us that we can either open or not open. Amen. And if we don't open it, we cannot walk in the righteousness that he created for us to be. So in those three days, when he was in the grave, in the ground, for three days and three nights, guess what he did? He beat up, he whooped hard, he put it down to the ground, sin and death. For if you eat of this, you will surely die. So he conquered sin, and he conquered death, and he came back from the grave and said, Ta-da! You get to be my kid again. You can change from your lost identity into the identity you were originally created to be. My name is Mary, and I am a child of God. Hallelujah. My name used to be Mary, and I was lost, and I was dead, and I was death, and I was blind, and I was an adulterer, and I was an addict, and I was a drunk, and, you and I was a liar, and I was a thief, and I was a hater. None of you people would have liked me. And I you would have y'all. I wouldn't have even thought about liking you. But then I met Jesus eye to eye, and love changed my life. Because love came down from heaven and became humanity so that he could be us on the cross and then he conquered sin and death and then when he came back from the grave he said here's what you lost in Genesis 3 he specifically said I will not leave you as orphans so if you're an orphan you're not a son or a daughter right? right. you can't be a son or a daughter until you're no longer an orphan and in our orphan statehood, sin still exists. Sin is a choice. Yeah, that's right. The Bible says, if you sin, not when you sin, but if you sin. That's a whole other subject for another day. Because that's really not taught from the pulpit. Because we can walk righteously. If you wake up righteous-minded, you will live righteously for the day. If you're a son or a daughter. If you're still an orphan, you're going to struggle hard. So the way to become not an orphan is to be 
born again and leave your orphanhood life and be born as a son or a daughter, whichever one you are, whichever one God made you to be, not what you ident I identify today as Corona exempt. <laughs> I don't need a shot. I'm Corona exempt. Um, that probably was me, not the Lord. I'm just saying. <laughs> Welcome to free will. Yeah. And Lord, that is it. It is free will. Because in this world, we will have trouble. In this world, we will have tribulation. In this world, we will not only have rough times, we'll have days that we wish had never happened. But like Jesus yesterday. said, take heart. I have overcome the world. Yeah. Amen. Before, he hated, before the world hated you, it hated me. Before it come down on you, it came down on me. Yeah. And so when he died on the cross as us, not for us, those words make a difference. And we have now the ability to be born again. I am now a daughter adopted into the kingdom by the king of kings, and I live a righteous life. Right. Period. I died to self, and I die to self daily. That's why Jesus said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. That's why Paul said in Romans 12 that we are transformed, continuing to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Because let me just tell you, I got some whack thoughts some days. <laughs> I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> hey, if you say this, where in the world did that come from? Can I tell you where it came from? In the world. You already said world. it in the question. Where in the world did that come from? It came from in the world. And we are not of the world, but we are here. Right, we have the shade I'm there. I am seated in the heavenlies, guys. Right, right, amen. Right, amen. This is just a shell that I'll put off one of these days. I am seated in the heavenlies because I am no longer a lost orphan right. in need of love. I am a daughter that gives love. Right. I don't care what you do. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what look you got on your face. I will love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Period. Period. There is nothing else that would change that. Because when Jesus hung on the cross, asked me, I got it. I looked him in the eyes, and when he said, I did, I said, I do. And I became a part of the bride of Christ. And one of these days, he's coming back, okay? He's come once. He's going to come a second time, Tomorrow. and he's going to come for a pickup date for a wedding. I'm not being rescued. i got a job to do while I'm here. I have a job to do because he called me. He said, hey, since you're my daughter, will you please do this for me? What do you think I'm going to say? Well, let me think about it. <laughs> now, be honest, I did argue for a while. Yeah, I right, wanted right. to sleep in today, though. There's no sleeping in. Kingdom work is 24-7, <laughs> my friend. 24-7, yeah, 368. Yeah, it stays there, buddy. But no, it feels it's I, 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 Hey, in, in the ministry, overtime is everything. Overtime is everything. You're right. So, you know, it, days a week, so in man. Genesis 1 and 2, when we look like him and then we lost it in Genesis 3, we go all the way to the New Testament. When he became our kinsman redeemer, he fulfilled the old law and gave us the law of grace. Thank goodness I can't even keep up with the top 10, much less the 613. And then he gave me grace. And he said, hey, psst, you don't want to be an orphan anymore? How about you come be in the kingdom? How about you eat of the bread of life and the living water and never be hungry again and never be thirsty again? And I get to walk in the newness of life. Now, it took a while. I mean, we've been down here five years. John, he's been around this long. I've changed. If you know Miss Louise, y'all have been around. Y'all know I have changed. In the five years I've been down here, I have changed even more. Remember? Ah, oh, First Corinthians. Come on. Paul said, please, won't you be a little foolish with me for the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Let's be crazy for Jesus. Because when we're crazy for Jesus, guess what happens? Lives change. That's right. Holy Spirit. The person that sleeps in the tent next to you is now not going to hell because you shared the gospel with him. Do your job. Yes. You do your job. I'll do my job. And Fort Worth is going to change. Amen. Let's do it. Why are we asleep? I come to set a fire under you today, and that came from him, not me. I thought we were going to talk about how big God is, but apparently we changed that. We're talking about the awakening. Let's wake up, guys. Why would you want to be an orphan? Why wouldn't you want to live righteously and live royally? Do you think 
Queen Elizabeth scrubs her own toilets. <laughs> the fool. Okay. She, there are she things more homes. that kingdom <laughs> children do not do. Do you know why I no longer stick a needle in my arm or smoke a blunt or drink a whole entire bottle of Jack Daniels? Because there's some things that righteousness doesn't do. Because love came to earth. And love changed my life. Because in the very beginning, the living expression was already there. And then I met him face to face. And when I met him face to face, I changed from being in need of love to being love. Because Amen. Jesus specifically said, ready to go, get this. Raise your hand if you're a who. That's a pronoun. That means you're a person. Okay, there's 12 of you in here. I don't know what the rest of you are. But, okay. A that is a this. This is a that. Oh, that's me. No, but you're not orange. <laughs> Jesus said, I came to save that which was lost. None of that. I'm a who? From Whoville? Who, in who Texas. I can share my So hair. what did he mean? He came to save the identity of who you are and who I am because that identity was lost. Genesis 3, left in the garden. Man, that sucked. But we had the chance to redeem it. Hallelujah. We had right. the chance to walk in freedom, in the newness of life. Matthew 11, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy and my burden is light you know what then he said after that and learn from me it's not christmas man it's 24 7 368 days a year that's right you're going to start using that now i better like use it. that now yeah. Yeah. Uh, 368 it's not a one-time gig it is an every day dying to self, making the choice to live righteous conscience so sin doesn't live in my life. Sin can live all around me, but it's not going to affect me. The Holy Spirit dwells within me. I am not getting sick from sin. You with me? There's really only one way to walk. If you claim to be a born-again believer, there's only one way to live. If you're living in a different method, then you either need to read this or check your heart because your, your name may not be written in the book of life. With me? You know what I'm saying? You know, picking up what I'm laying down? Are you awake? No. Testing. One, two, three. Is this thing on? You got coffee? Okay, I want to read this. Because here's the deal. I, I told you earlier, I'm seated in the heavenlies. Remember? Scripture says, I'm righteous and seated in the heavenlies. I am here speaking to you today because God told me to. I am here speaking to you today because... Son of God is important to me. You with me? Look right here. Don't look at them. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I have ADHD and I can turn them out so you get to. <laughs> Not really. I don't have that. I don't claim that. Just kidding. That's right. <laughs> Rebuke that right now. The living bread, the bread of life, and the living water. It became my everything. Because you know what happened? I realized I couldn't do it on my own. You know how many times I said I'm never going to drink again? <laughs> Probably as not many as me. There, the number's not big enough, I'm pretty sure. Give me times I said, I'm not going to do that again, whatever it was. If I'm not going to do it again, I'm here to tell you it was not right. You with me? I don't got to use it. I don't got to tell you what it is. It doesn't matter. If it's not right, it's not right. I am told to be right, just not not right. That's right. Yeah, I like that. Are you with me? And then Jesus said... Ready, Philippians? On your darkest day, in your most ugliest moment, in your foulest sin, your mind. I'm thankful. Say that again. On your darkest day, in your most lowest moment of life, in your most foul moment that you don't even want to think about, much less tell anybody about. Jesus said, mine. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Because the story is not about the prodigal son. It's about the loving father. Amen. Amen. It is about the loving father that stood on his porch and watched for you fools to come home. I done come home. Yeah. When I'm seated in the heavenlies, 
And John the Revelator wrote this down. He said, I saw a heavenly portal open before me. And the same trumpet voice I heard speaking with me at the beginning broke the silence and said, Ascend into this realm. I want to reveal to you what must happen after this. Let me just tell you what happens. Let me tell you what life looks like when you're seated in the heavenlies. You with me? Y'all listening? Don't look at them people walking by. Here. We ain't going nowhere. We and then read this nowhere. when you get home because chew your own food. Where would we go? Where would we go? Where would we go and what would we do? Instantly I was taken into the spirit realm and behold, I saw a heavenly throne in place and someone seated on it. His appearance was sparkling like crystal and glowing like cornelian gemstone. Surrounded the throne was a circle of green light like an emerald rainbow. Let me put this into perspective to you because hello, the ark was big. The door was so big, no one couldn't close it. God had to close it. Three stories tall. But you do know, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. It says that he holds the universe in his hand. That hand is attached to a body. Just, I mean, I'm short. I'm only 5'3". The size of my hand compared to the size of my body. And the size of the throne! You with me? The size of the throne where he saw someone seating on it in the heavenly realms. If he's got the universe in his hand and the earth is his footstool, tell me that seat's not big. And he cares enough to love me. I'm nothing, man. I am nothing. I may be loud. I may have pink hair. I may have flowers on my car. But there's so much more within me than what's on the outside. Because his love dwells within me. And it's my job for my cup to overflow and for you to get splashed by it. He gets the new color for He gets the new color, Sam. Okay, ready? Encircling the great throne were 24 thrones with elders in glistening white garments seated upon them and each wearing a golden crown of victory. Here's the deal. When you say I do and get born again, you won. You have won. Right, there is no more battle. Right. You have won. Here's the problem. We do that thing that Darren and I were doing and we just tug a war with God. God says, I want you to go this way. And you go, I want to go this way. And he says, no, I want you to go this way. And you go, no, I want to go this way. You spend all day long doing this. You don't get much done but getting busy. <laughs> but this guy went out at the end of the day. That is what? Only if we submit to the Lord. Amen. I submit. Because you when submit. it's a one-step gig, there's no 12 steps in the kingdom. You, you resist the devil and submit to God and he will flee from you. It's just a one-step plan. Submit to God. That's it. You get born again. You say, I do. The only thing that you still entangle yourself with is what you choose to entangle yourself. Stop choosing. Stop, cho stop choosing. So much better to walk like this. Yes, because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Yeah. You with me? And pulsing from the throne were blinding flashes of lightning, crashes of thunder, and voices, and burning before the throne are seven blazing torches, which represent the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne was a pavement like a crystal sea of glass. On my biggest trip ever, I have never seen anything like that. Really? You know what's like to be high on God? <laughs> yeah, better than any yeah, drug. Yeah. Better than any drug. Right, amen. Ooh, better yeah. than yeah. any yeah. adulterated yeah. version of a high yeah, is the high on the king because the king is king of kings and his love conquers all. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, the was. Come on now.
Come on. The was, the is, and the is to come. Amen. He is the. He is the I am. He don't need a name. He don't need a reason. He is God. He's the great I am. He is the great I am. Yes. And then the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Amen. Amen. If you want, I know we don't do this very often, and we're starting to do it more, and we may do it a whole, whole, whole lot. If you want that freedom, I want you to stand up. If we already got your freedom, you can stand up anyway. You can stand up anyway. You want, you want more freedom, stand up. All right, there you go. I want all the freedom. I want all the freedom I can get. I stand every time I can stand. Amen. Tall, head up, shoulders back. Because I'm a kid. I'm no longer an orphan. That's right. He Come set on, me kid. free and he redeemed me. Scripture says he picked me up from the ground in the hole I dug for myself and he cleaned me off and he set my feet on solid ground. And I stand on the rock and my life has changed. Go do this. Jesus, we want more. Jesus, we want more. We want more. We want more. Lord, we want our lives to change. We want to look like your son. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want to be baptized in water. We want to be baptized in the Spirit. We want to pray in languages that nobody else understands. We want to be filled with love, and we want it to get on everybody we know. Fill us, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. guys to tell the Lord what you want to tell him. You can talk out loud. You can mumble in your breath. I don't care what you do. You can think in your mind. He hears your thoughts. Tell him what you want to tell him. Lord, set me free from me. Help me walk in righteousness. Help me walk in glory to bring you glory, to love you, to praise you, to be nothing and exist only for you. You are the reason for everything. You are the loving, living existence, and my life belongs to you. Let me live out loud for you, Lord. Let me change lives around me through you. It is not about me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Imagine being in that throne room. It's loud. Francis Chan said this. He said, if I, I saw myself in that throne room and all I could think was, was God, please don't kill me. You're not going to walk up to him and tell him what for. And you're not going to walk up to him and tell him what you think about the way he ran your life because you're the one that made the choices, side note. For such a time as this, Lord, we have been created. Help us to walk in the newness of life as your kids. Holy Spirit, pierce hearts, invade lives, transform minds, a hunger and a craving for the Word. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Change us, Lord. From the inside out. Let us see you for who you are. And when we see you for who you are, then we're going to know what we need to be looking like. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, I thank you for the words that you have given us today. You are a good, good daddy. Our Abba. Show us what it's like to be loved when we've been reborn. Refather us and teach us new so that we walk in the newness of life and our cup overflows and people around us get healed, get delivered, get born again and walk in Shekinah glory. I thank you for what you're doing in our family, in our church. The pinky toe of the bride of Christ, thank you. 
love you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify you, we bless you. All because of you, we exist because of you. So use us today, Lord. Thank you for the food that you've given us, the physical food, the spiritual food. Thank you for the needs list. Thank you for the world that goes on around us. Let us invade the world with the Shekinah glory. Knock them dead. Thank you for grace and mercy, sobriety, freedom, new life in Christ. Holy Spirit, use us. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.